Welcome back to Magic 89.9. You're tuned in uh, to the Pop Stop. My name is Ricky Flo, and today we have, uh, we've exited the booth, actually. We've made quite the trip to visit our good friend, who you guys have been voting for day in and day out. Um, on the station, we have with us Mr. Charlie Puth. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing is what I want to know. I'm good. I like your watch. That's the first thing. Thank That's, you. It's a good watch. Really? It's a good watch. I, I love it as well. I like watches. Really? Yeah. Okay. And That's uh, something yeah, different. Yeah, there's something different that mm -hmm. you might not have known. I actually know a lot of things about you, Charlie. <laughs> it's not so creepy. I'm sorry. No, but I, I do. You're a very interesting person. I am an interesting weirdo. You are, yeah. and, and and that's I think uh, part of your appeal. I think that's why a lot of people like what you do. They like you in general. Mm -hmm. They vote for your songs on the station. Am that's I keeping good. you out? Am I keeping you out? Oh no, not no. No. Okay. All. Cool. No, no. Okay. Um, the, I I've I've always wanted to ask you this question. How many people come up to you and and say your name like, hey, Chale? Oh, Cha as, Chale. As in like. The do they ask you to bite thing? their finger? Or um. Someone did one time, and did one, you? one girl did, and I was like, it's no, strange. that's not going to yeah. happen. Sorry, that's not going to happen. Because it was in front of, like, it was after a show, and she was like, can you actually bite my finger? And I was like, is that some sort of, like, <laughs> what? Is some weird fetish or something like that? No, I'm not going to do that in front of everybody, but, um, um, good question, I guess. I don't, I didn't really know how to end that conversation. Would you say that that would be the weirdest fan experience or interaction that you've ever had? No. Not even close. Um, the uh, I'm scared to ask. I'm scared for your answer. I'm scared to. I'm trying to think how I should phrase it. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to be. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to keep it PG. Okay. Um, which is good. I um, was at some sort of meet and greet one time, and one fan, fan was like, "Hi, can I have a hug?" And I was like, "Sure, you can have." It's innocent. A, yeah, yeah. It's very innocent. Very good. And um, and then another fan, uh, she was like, "Can my friend also have a hug?" I'd be like. Why not? Hugs That's for, better. Hugs for everybody. Uh -huh. Then um, I start talking to her, and then her friend goes behind me, and then as I'm talking to this other girl, I'm just like, blah, 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 eyebrow, blah, 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 and then... Uh, she, <laughs> eyebrow, blah, blah, blah. And, and then her friend pushes me into this girl that I'm talking to, and her hand goes directly into my <gasps> hands. And um, I'm like... <laughs> Oh my god! And I was very, I was like, uh uh, that's not cool, and then security had to like take them away. I'm, I'm surprised you still allow, you know, mm -hmm. really close fan to, fan to you interactions then after that. Mm -hmm. That must be traumatic, well, man. Well, one person can't, like, well, not traumatic. But like, well, mm. so, <laughs> so one one person can't ruin the whole experience for that's everybody true, else. That's true. There's a lot of nice, uh, respectful people mm -hmm. out there as well. And you know, it's something that I that I know about your fans is that uh, they're very loyal to you. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they vote for your songs day in and day out on Magic eighty nine point nine. Thank it's, you. It's uh, it's it's terrific. So I, I just I just want to know, did you hear anything about the Philippines prior to your trip here? I. Um, heard that it was one of my biggest markets. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was very excited to go there because of that. Well, here, because of that. And you're here now. Yeah, I'm here now, and what else did I know? I don't know much about the Philippines, though, so someone has to fill me in. I know it rains here a lot. It's rainy season. It is rainy season. I just heard that you guys have two kind of seasons. It's either sunny or yeah. not, or really rainy. You know, actually, season. you came at a pretty good time. Really? If you were here during the summer, you would have melted. Really? Like legit melted. But it's monsoon season, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but so it's not. It's not too monsoony, if you know what I mean. It's not too monsoony. So Hopefully. is it? Is it so monsoony that we wouldn't be able to fly out of here? No, you it? you still could. Okay. You still could. So you're 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 pretty good. You're pretty okay. Good. Okay. Okay. So you you said you wanted to know more about the Philippines. I think yeah, that I your do. fans are going to let you experience that firsthand when you when you do a show for them this weekend. Yeah. That's I, pretty exciting. I Why are you smiling like that? Because I can't walk because I can't wait to yeah. see you. Yeah. It's very exciting. See, that? that's what I really like. Okay, so now some people think that you started um, in the music industry back in 2009. Um, not real. I mean, I, was, I, I started making YouTube videos pretty religiously yeah. in 2009. I wasn't really signed to a record. Mm -hmm. Not really. I wasn't signed to yeah. a record label. Um, the first time I got signed to a record label was when I went on Ellen's show. Mm -hmm, and I she, saw that. Yeah, that was really a pretty life-changing experience. And then, um, and then I went back to school mm -hmm. and graduated uh, December 2013, moved back home for a couple months, then moved out to L.A. and mm -hmm. then uh, wrote uh, See You Again. 
and yeah. uh, Marvin Gaye, and kind of went all from there. Okay, we're going to get to both those songs in just a bit, but mm -hmm. I want to take you like all the way back, all the way back, and I know that, you know, back in the sixth grade, oh, um, you were uh, you were quite the... You were quite the unique individual. Yeah, yeah, I, I would think so. I, I'm, I'm starting to be. I'm starting to figure out. I'm trying to. I'm trying <laughs> you know to where think. I'm getting at. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think I might. Okay. So back in the sixth grade, you like Christmas? Are you big on Christmas? I love Christmas. Oh, I know. What you're gonna ask. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I made a Go Christmas ahead. album. You did make a Christmas album. In sixth grade. I can imagine. I can. I can just imagine. Like, how did you think of making a Christmas album in the sixth grade? Because normally oh. people just, you know, playing. And just like want to be sixth graders and go yeah, play outside exactly. in the dirt and everything. Uh -huh. I I was obsessed with making like, I was obsessed. I was so weird. I was, I was obsessed with like actual <laughs> CD jewel cases. Uh -huh. Even and, and I don't really hold CDs much anymore because they don't really like. They make, don't exist anymore. They do, but not really. Like the so. Nowadays, are like, what's a CD? I held one in Germany mm -hmm. the other day, and like an actual one, like a the, the an M and M <laughs> record, and I okay. was like, oh my god, all this this rush of nostalgia. Like, I was obsessed with how, like, the jewel case looked and the design mm -hmm. of it and everything. I was obsessed with making a CD, so that's where my love of, like, I guess production started because I yeah. wanted to make a CD. So I made a Christmas CD. In the and, sixth grade. In the sixth grade. Uh -huh. And I went door to door and sold all of them. You sold, you sold yeah. them? Yeah, I with, sold them. Without any supervision? Well, no, 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 my mother. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's better. Okay, okay yeah, it so makes... My mom came with mm -hmm. me, and, um... Uh, yeah, we just went door to door, and uh, I donated all of the money. I didn't keep it. I you just, didn't even keep it. I didn't care. I just wanted to make a CD. Aww. I was a sixth grader. Now, were these all original Christmas songs? Oh, no. Did? They no, were just like, but my voice was up really high. Oh! Like, Aww. Yeah. Does that, you know, do, they, do you think they still exist until now? Oh, they stuff? still oh, they still exist. Really? Um, all throughout my town. Mm -hmm. and, I'm sure someone's gonna <laughs> sell one on eBay one day. I have a question. How did you? Uh, how did you? You know, wake up. At, did you ever wake up in the morning and say that you you wanted to do this for a living? Like when was wake that? Wake up in the morning. <laughs> did this for a living? Are you trying to think did of a song just now? Did I ever wake up in the morning? Did I ever wake up in the morning? Okay. Is that want to do it for a living? <laughs> that's that's on me. Did no, I but I want to live in. Did you? <laughs> when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, no, I um. See now I know the question because I just sang it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I no I, I just I, it's always just kind of like it's pr like producing music mm -hmm. not so much I, I've gotten more acquainted to performing live mm -hmm. but it wasn't my first love my yeah. first love was producing music and like mm -hmm. building tracks and making beats mm -hmm. um, and now I've fallen in love with like performing for fans. There you I go. Um, but that's where it started first, like probably around the time of the Christmas album making. Mm -hmm. See, that yeah. was the that yeah. was the whole epiphany that, that was you the got. The whole epiphanotic moment. I okay. don't know if that's a word. Epiphanotic. Yeah. You can make it a word if you want, Charlie. I made it a word. We Thank could. You. We could. Okay. So I I wanted to ask about um, Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. How iconic is is the first few words? Let's Marvin Gaye and get it on. Well, I think. I wouldn't. I, I can't. I can't say anything. I write is iconic because I'll sound like such an un, unlikable person. But it is pretty funny that I managed to make it a verb. But it's such a good. Like it was such a good thing because you know we're in 2015. Everything yeah. is a verb now. Everything is a verb now. Right. That's what, that's what, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Right. Even, so I, everything's a verb now. So I made Marvin Gaye a verb. I think mm -hmm. it's just it's about educating, educating the kids. Educating the kids. Educating. Making the, it sound epiphanotic and stuff. Yeah, right. well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we made up two words mm -hmm. just because I get a lot of comments like, oh, who's Marvin Gaye? And, ah. and I'm like, mm -hmm. no. Here's a big And, um, no, but that's fine. There's like so, some 12. You know, and twelve year olds and that. Yeah. They may I actually really just not know, not being ignorant, they just don't know. Yeah. So um, they're listening to that song and. Uh, they're going back to out of, out of curiosity, like yeah. checking out old Marvin Gaye music, which is what I grew up listening to. So. Edumacation. 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 For the kids. And and that's yeah, you know, I find that very very likable about you is because you're a 23 year old when it was about mm -hmm. Marvin Gaye. Yeah, I know a lot about old. I I I, I, I when when I was like one mm -hmm. to 12 years old, all I listened to was I didn't listen to music of my generation mm -hmm. like the Backstreet Boys yeah. and in sync until 
I was like 12 years old. I listened, to, so before that I was listening to The Carpenters and That's amazing. James Taylor and all, so I had a lot, that, all that dense music yeah. was kind of like in my young brain, so I uh -huh. took it with me when I was, when I started to make mm -hmm. more modern music. And I love that about you. I think that, that it reflects in your music as well. Oh, thank you. I really, really like it. But back to Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. um, the video is, is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I would have to say that it is one of the most interesting videos that I've seen. Mm -hmm. How was that experience like? I mean, because there was a lot of, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of making yeah. out and dry humping. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mm -hmm. like both of those things and I was just like, <laughs> I was just thinking. Okay. I was just thinking to myself. I never went to prom. I never. You never. No, I I never went to <gasps> uh, prom because um, uh, no no girls messed with the pooth man back then. So. Um, no girls messed with the pooth man. Mm -hmm, maybe my next record, and. Um, <laughs> no. You heard it first on Magic eighty nine point nine. Let's make the most sexually unappealing music for the <laughs> next that? album. <laughs> No girls like the booth man, and it's me with like a full gritty beard. And I'm in the Appalachian Mountains, just sweaty and just horrible. And just like, uh, I don't know what I'm saying right now. Um, uh, so for my first major music video, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, you know, something that I had never experienced, and mm -hmm. that was prom. Yeah. And in my mind, everybody makes, makes out, out of prom. <laughs> And it didn't start out like, it wasn't supposed to be like that, like, yeah. dramatic. I was behind the scenes with the director, Mark Clasio, um, uh, the very next day, mm -hmm. for, uh, interesting fact. Mm -hmm. And I was... The very next day. The very next day. And I was, like, screaming. I was like, make out, make out, get oh on my. the floor, whipped cream, <gasps> make out. Yeah. How hands-on were you? I'm, ve I'm a very hands-on person. Uh -huh. I get pretty rambunctious sometimes. It's okay though. Okay. Especially in music videos. Okay, we are going to segue real quick. Um, yeah. Before I let you go, <laughs> before I let you go, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You just answer the first thing off the top of your head. Oh god. You good? Okay. This is going to be so I'm exciting. Are you ready? All right. Sorry, my lawyer. <clears throat> ready, set, go. How many selfies do you take a day? Uh, no, uh one. No. You no, lie. No, it's you like lied. it's not. I don't take selfies every day. It's once a week. <laughs> Favorite color. Green. Chips or fries? Uh, fries. Your dream collab? Uh, Bruno Mars. Favorite place in the whole world? No. If there, was a, <laughs> if there was a zombie apocalypse to happen tonight, where would you run and hide? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd probably run here where I'm sitting. <laughs> Just hide under the chair. Hide under the chair. Nice. Well, thank you very much, Charlie. Can you invite uh, all the listeners of Magic 89.9 to keep on supporting you and your songs? Thank you all listeners of Magic 89. I, it makes me really, really happy that you keep voting for me and I see you guys on Twitter and like your your twi Twitter mm -hmm. coming up all the time saying you 100,000 fans have voted for you. I'm like, wow, Jesus, that's so many fans. Thank mm -hmm. you, Philippines. I, I love every single one of y'all. I'd be Honestly, nowhere without you guys, and I mean that seriously, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Epiphanotic moment. Epiphanotic hippopotamus <laughs> emancipation locomotion. Okay, that was too long a word, but yeah. it's not a word. But hey, okay, so last thing, um, can you just say that you are Charlie Poop, because obviously you are, Yeah. Um, and that you're listening to today's best music, Magic 89.9. Cool. Hi, I'm Charlie Puth, and you're listening to. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Hi, I'm Charlie Puth, and you're listening to today's best music on Magic 89.